The Target boycott over its Pride theme products has cost the company $10 billion in 10 days. And what's the deal with the debt ceiling deal? For more insight on some of the headlines hitting our nation's capital, we want to discuss with our Washington insider, Armstrong Williams. Good morning to you. Happy Memorial Day to you. Good morning. Bud Light still feeling the effects of a boycott, Armstrong, and economists predict they won't even be able to overcome the losses until well into 2024. Do you think this will also continue, though, for Target? You know, uh, Jen, obviously Target stalled the fallout and the massive loss as a result of Bud Light's campaign. And obviously the few minority voices within the company felt that they could go forth with their clothing line and they would not be fallout. But I mean, when you're targeting babies and these kids and not adults and parents walking in these stores and, and in a state of shock, I mean, they deserve to lose the $9 billion, but I don't know if they really care. I don't know who's running the, 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 co the company's days. It seems as though the few are running their asylum. And so they'll continue to pay a price until the shareholders say enough is enough and they bring us call to this nonsense of indoctrinating our kids. Yeah, market value for Anheuser-Busch, the parent company of Bud Light, by the way, has lost $15.7 billion since April 1st. So we shall see if this uh, will also, this trend will continue for Target. In the meantime, I wanna to talk to you about the deal that has been reached between President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. There seems to be enough lawmakers who are not on board though at this time. What are you hearing? Will this get through both the it, House and Senate? It, it will, Pat. You know, Jen, everything is about compromise. Biden realized that he had to compromise on the spending and he had to cut some of these programs. I mean, when you talk about welfare and the SNAP and other programs, just think about this again, the insanity that you don't require people to work for at least 20 hours, you cut their work, and you, they're getting these benefits, particularly if they're able-bodied. So Kevin McCarthy has compromised in terms of the amount of time that this, this debt ceiling, it will go through the election year, it won't come back up again until 2024, 2025. So it's all about compromise, and the Senate and the House will find their way through um, these details, but you best believe that America will meet its debt obligation, and it just, Everybody's got to sacrifice something. Everybody can walk away with a victory because Biden doesn't want to take the debt ceiling debate into the 2024 presidential elections. He doesn't want that. They just want this over. Finally, I want to ask you about Senator Dianne Feinstein. She's back, but it was just revealed how serious her health struggles have been with both shingles and encephalitis. Uh, what do you think right now? What's happening? Are Democrats still weary about her serving out the rest of her term? Yeah. Uh, she is just a tool for the Democrats now. This woman is 89 years old. She's frail, she's fragile. The Democrats have one agenda in mind, to get their judicial appointees through the federal system. They need to get their judges and the court system. Diane Feinstein, the fact in her absence, the Republicans have filibustered and Biden has not been able to get his judges passed. He had to come back feeble, weak, distraught. He even said she has a better way at all. She even asked why Kamala Harris was breaking a tie. I mean, obviously she's out of it. She's a warrior, she's a senior citizen, she's at the end of her ropes, and all they care about is her votes. This is what Congress has become cold, heartless, and all it is about winning at all costs. And Diane Feinstein is just another example of the heartless um, that what is going on in Congress and also in many areas of this country. It's a sad moment for us. It's just another, another sad chapter in the history of politics. Washington insider Armstrong Williams joining us from some beautiful location. I like that scenery there behind you, sir. Hope you have a great memorial. Portland, Portland Maine. It is gorgeous. Happy Memorial Day. Have a good one, sir. Same to you. Thank you.